All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Bo McCready. You can find me on Twitter at Bo Knows Data. Uh, and I am a senior consultant uh, with a group called Zeo Matrix. Uh, we are Tableau partners, and we provide uh, Tableau consulting services based out of Austin, Texas. Uh, and I'm here today to talk about uh, making a viral viz. So to start this uh, conversation, I want to back up to last year's Tableau conference. Uh, prior to last year's Tableau conference, I had really no social media presence. I rejected Twitter. I didn't have a Reddit account. Um, it, was all, uh, it was all pretty fresh to me. Uh, but I competed in a local Iron Viz competition up in Madison, Wisconsin, and through that was lucky enough to uh, get a spot in this uh, tip battle competition. Uh, which I didn't really know what I was getting into, but uh, as you see from the incredibly talented lineup of people here, full of Zen Masters, Ambassadors, uh, Mark who's with Tableau now, uh, somehow I was there. Uh, because as I said at the time, uh, every eight person tournament needs a number eight seed. Uh, I got to fill that role. Uh, so uh, super fun time, really loved meeting everybody, getting connected with this community. And I thought, hey, I want to get into this a little bit more. Uh, let's, let's make a Twitter account. Let's. Uh, Let's start publishing and, and see where that goes. So one of the things I did at the end of 2018 is finally create a Reddit account and start posting on the Data is Beautiful subreddit. And I put a couple of projects up that didn't really go anywhere. Uh, and then I, I put together this piece uh, looking at three-point shooting trends in, in the NBA. Uh, if you're a pro basketball fan, you know that teams shoot threes a lot more than they used to. And I thought, I bet we can do something uh, with the data around that. So I put together this little dashboard in Tableau Public. Uh, and uh, I was actually driving to the Children's Museum with my, with my wife and my kids, and my phone just started blowing up after I posted this. And uh, within probably an hour or so, it had crossed the 10,000 upvote threshold uh, on Reddit. And I thought, wow, this is, uh, this is pretty wild. Uh, so that was kind of the start of the, of the whole thing for me. I thought, hey, I would, uh, I'd like to, to try this a little bit more. So from there, on my uh, freshly minted Twitter account, uh, I made a few data viz resolutions. Uh, one was that I wanted to get a viz of the day on Tableau Public. Uh, and I also wanted to prioritize insight over novelty and uh, just, just keep having fun, because this is fun. Uh, and uh, Tableau Software's official account commented and said, hey, those are fantastic resolutions. I was like, all right, well, now I'm committed. Now this is happening. So uh, I started playing around with a lot of different uh, publicly available data sets. And uh, I don't know if anyone here has ever worked with data from the Internet Movie Database, IMDb. Uh, they have a lot of publicly available information around film ratings, TV shows, whatever you can think of. Uh, and so I thought, I'm going to see what I can do with this. And I'm a big fan of the horror genre in particular. So the first thing I put together with this data uh, was this little history of uh, horror films, just how many films were released each year, uh, how were they rated, and so on. Mouse over, learn a little bit more about it. Uh, and as I was doing that, I thought, hey, uh, this is actually kind of an interesting shape to the number of films that are being released over time. Uh, and I wonder if there's uh, anything bigger we can say about how that played out. Uh, so the next thing I did is I uh, changed the filter to war films to see what percent of each films each year were uh, war. And uh, if this were a smaller room, I'd ask you to guess uh, what year that is right in the middle there, I'll just tell you, it's 1943. Uh, if you know your American history, there might be a few reasons that we are just churning out war movies that year. Uh, so when I saw this, I thought, hey, there's, there's really a story here. Maybe we can uh, say something about the films and TV shows we're interested in, um, combined with our bigger, our bigger societal trends. So that turned into uh, this dashboard that I put together of uh, film genre popularity uh, really over the last 108 years or so. Um, I loved how this turned out. You can see so clearly uh, when we invent talkies in the late 1920s and then everybody wants to make musicals and then time goes on and on and on and we realize maybe we overdid the musical thing a little bit. Uh, you see the, uh, the Western genre, huge, huge, huge for 50 years and then it just craters and then it comes back up a little, get, a little again and, uh, and then gone. Um, documentaries hugely on the rise lately. Um, so I don't know. I was pretty stoked when I put this project together. I thought it was interesting. Uh, put it up on Reddit, and uh, this one, maybe it's a little hard to see, but this one within a few hours crossed um, 30,000 upvotes. And so at that point, um, 
before I, before I came to this world, uh, I spent time working in academia, working in public schools. Uh, so I spent a lot of years producing stuff where I was really, really happy if uh, 20 people looked at it. And so uh, reaching this kind of engagement was, uh, was, was pretty mind-blowing. Uh, and then from there, it started taking off uh, on uh, other social media accounts. Uh, PBS tweeted it out. Uh, Writer's Digest tweeted it out. Um, Script Magazine. Uh, and then actually I got contacted by the Saturday Evening Post. Uh, one of their writers saw it and said, hey, can we interview you and can we write a little, a little story about this? Um, so again, this was like two months into my journey of doing anything on social media with Tableau. Uh, and I already got to do this, which was, uh, which was a pretty fun experience. Um, and then uh, a day or two later, I got Viz of the Day and then Viz of the Week. Uh, so I can say I knocked out my New Year's resolution in 17 days, uh, which I think is pretty good. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, and then here's a little screenshot of my, uh, my Tableau public profile. Um, there's uh, more than 260,000 views just on this dashboard, um, which, again, 20 people read my work for so many years. And then I did the Twitter thing. and. Uh, and here we are. So uh, pretty wild, pretty fun, and uh, had me inspired to just keep going. So the next project I wanted to highlight, uh, if you guys haven't been up to the Tableau Public Viz Gallery on the second level, I highly, highly suggest it. Super cool, inspiring work. Uh, I see some of the other authors in the audience out here, too. Um, and so uh, this piece that I put together is, is up there as well. Um, I grew up in uh, southern Wisconsin and uh, actually spent the majority of my life uh, represented by um, out legislators uh, in Congress. So during, uh, during Pride Month, um, Tableau had their Visualized Diversity initiative going on, and I thought, hey, um, I just want to take a look at, uh, at uh, out members of Congress throughout, uh, throughout history. And so uh, this one um, was also featured as a, as a Viz of the Day uh, earlier this year, so I got to um, have that experience a couple times. Uh, and again, just a, a fun project to work on, uh, fun engagement, um, and kept going with the social media thing. So this is a, a screenshot of, of my Reddit profile, and uh, these are the projects I've uh, uh, posted this year that have, that have the most upvotes. And um, again, kind of just a, a, a ridiculous experience knowing that uh, um, more people are seeing things than are upvoting, and so actually being able to reach millions and millions of people literally uh, with work produced in Tableau in less than a year um, is, is a wild experience. Uh, and one of the things that I've really loved about it is it's not just the upvotes, it's not really about that, it's about the engagement. And uh, there are thousands and thousands of comments on these. And if you spent any time on Reddit, you know those comments can be a mixed bag. Um, they're not all super kind. Um, but even when people aren't very nice on social media, um, I think there's kernels of truth in the things that are being said that can help you um, you know, figure out how to improve your work. So um, I have really uh, viewed the Reddit experience as a way to have thousands and thousands of people give me feedback on a regular basis um, and, and continue improving my work that way. So um, very cool experience. Uh, definitely uh, good practice developing a much thicker skin as well. Um, but uh, yeah, the amount of engagement and feedback you can get is, uh, is really, really remarkable. Um, so uh, along this journey, I uh, also had a chance earlier this year to be a Tableau Public featured author for a while. Um, and the strangest experience of all, um, the stuff I've done on Reddit has, has done pretty well. And uh, one day I got a message on Reddit just out of the blue uh, from Fernando, who uh, works for Forbes. And he said, hey, I'm a writer for Forbes. I've seen a bunch of your projects on here. You want to do a profile? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, so uh, you know, I, I I'm so thankful to the the Tableau community and uh, and Tableau Public and this product to be able to go from, uh, you know, at last year's Tableau conference, um, I hadn't really done much of anything, uh, and then in July, um, I got a feature in Forbes. Uh, so one of the takeaways I hope everybody has here is if you haven't done anything like this, you can. There's absolutely nothing special about me other than I started doing it and working pretty hard at it. So if you see people at this conference, you're going to see inspiring speakers, amazing visas. Um, just give it a shot. Put yourself out there. Uh, it's pretty fun uh, and a really, really nice and supportive community. So I guess getting to the punchline here, uh, people ask me a lot because I do get a lot of engagement online, what does it take to help a viz go viral? Uh, and that's a really, really hard question to ask. 
but I'm going to try. Um, so the first thing is, this is really, really overly simplistic, but at the same time, it looks nice. It really does help to put together things that look nice. You can find tons of examples of uh, data visualization best practices, documentation. Um, really, there, there are experts out there that you can learn from and like absolutely, absolutely do that. Um, the second thing uh, that I'm going to spend the most time on uh, is that it's easy to understand. Um, I know I went through these really, really quickly, but a lot of the projects that, that I've had get a lot of engagement. They're not the most technically complex things you can come up with. They're not all kinds of you know, radial charts and parameter actions and all these things that are amazing. Um, but you know, quite frankly, I've gotten a lot of engagement from just bar charts and line graphs. And um, I think if you can put together a data story uh, that uh, you know teaches somebody something and makes them think about something honestly in just a few seconds um, that's a really really powerful thing to be able to do uh, the internet's a fast-moving place people are accessing things scrolling through their phones you want them to look and you want them to get the point um, pretty quickly uh, third thing is that uh, it, it has a hook for everyone um, the projects I've put up here are about movies uh, food uh, sports names um, most people, or a lot of people at least, uh, have some interest in that. Um, everybody has a name. Name projects do crazy well. I have no idea why, but um, yeah. So uh, you know, I think if if something's in your topic that, um, or if you have a topic that has you know something for everybody to see themselves in it, um, that really that really helps a lot. Everybody has an opinion about movies, TV shows, um, whatever. Um, and so some of the some of those more, more esoteric topics, um, I love making projects like that too. But you know, honestly, most people don't. Uh, don't have as much interest. And finally, luck. Uh, I want to emphasize luck as being a huge, huge factor. Um, you saw some of the projects I've put up that have the most uh, upvotes. There are also plenty that really get hardly any. Uh, you can post almost identical projects on different days at different times and get completely different responses. Um, so if you do try this out, if you do try the social media thing and you don't get immediate engagement, it doesn't mean your work's not amazing. Uh, sometimes, honestly, it's just, it's just bad luck. And, uh, and, and that's okay. So going along with that, I would say um, it's fun to get upvotes, it's fun to get comments and all that, but you know, don't, don't do it for those reasons. Um, do it because it's fun and do it because you love it. So in my last two minutes, um, for me this is about a lot more than just posting things on social media and seeing if it gets hits or not. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, about why I think this matters and why some of the principles of what's helped me have some visits go fairly viral um, can be applied to all of our day-to-day -day work. So we talk a lot in this community about analytics enablement. And uh, I think enablement comes in a lot of forms, and design is one of them. Uh, you can produce 10-page you know, documentation on a dashboard and have hyperlinks out to big readme files. Um, but honestly, if you can just design a clear and concise dashboard that people can navigate through easily and understand the story quickly, um, I think that's more powerful than any of those types of documentation. So I like to try out chart types like this on social media and then bring them back to my day job. Uh, use those same principles um, with, with people I'm working with um, because the same principles that help a biz do well online um, also help your dashboards resonate with, uh, with executives and coworkers. Uh, I, did my, uh, I did my master's in public policy at the University of Wisconsin and uh, had a lot of practice learning how to write things for uh, legislators who will pay attention to you for about you know, five or 10 seconds. Uh, and if you haven't gotten the point across by then, um, you've already lost them. So um, I guess I bring that, uh, that mindset to my, uh, my creative uh, visiting as well. And, uh, and I feel like that helps. Um, so I am out of time. Uh, so I'm just going to say, please stay in touch, come up, say hi, follow me on Twitter, shoot me an email. Um, I love meeting people from this community and, uh, and uh, talking to everybody and uh, making great connections here. So thank you so much for being here. Had a lot of fun. Thanks.